Oh, witch drama is like no other drama because people curse each other when there's witch drama. <laughs> Hello, my name is Sarah Lyons. I'm a witch, as you can tell, and I'm a tarot card reader. I've been practicing witchcraft for about 10 years now, and I normally don't wear hats like this. Today, I'm gonna to be watching clips from several movies and TV shows that feature witches and setting the record straight on just how accurate some of those depictions are. Ah! You cursed brat! Look what you've done! I'm Melody! Melody! This movie freaked me out so much when I was a kid. I mean, that is how I melt in the summer when I'm wearing all black. Obviously, this is a little bit done up for Hollywood. It was one of the first colorized movies that people got to see on the big screen. So one of the things that they did to kind of make Oz so much more beautiful, odd and surreal is make the witch green in it. Every time you see a green witch in a Halloween store or you see people dressing up in costumes of witches wearing green paint on their face, all goes back to the Wizard of Oz. There's no previous lore about that. <laughs> I'm doing that right now. How? I'm a witch. I have powers. Uh, I can make these kind of things happen. I'm sorry, I can't with the sparkles. I've never made sparkles appear in the air. I don't know what the point of that is. Just to walk in and have like glitter everywhere. It is a little accurate that when you're on a date with someone, whenever the witchcraft thing comes up, the date either gets a lot more fun or just kind of dies right there. Well, what do you do? And I read tarot cards and do witchcraft. Uh, what do you do, you know? Oh. Come to mommy! Afraid not. Fackery, big stout lady feline. Still alive. And waiting for you. Ah, oh, thou hast waited in vain. And thou wilt fail to save thy friends, just as thou failed to save thy sister. This is one of my favorite movies. I watch it every October. And one of the main tropes throughout Hocus Pocus is Winifred's spell book and how she needs that spell book to make them young and beautiful again. Witches having spell books, that's a pretty accurate idea. Nowadays, witches might call the place where they keep their spells a book of shadows. Flying on broomsticks is a really common trope in a lot of old witch lore. A lot of what people associate with witches comes from the old woodcuts that we would see in Europe, of women flying with other witches on a broomstick to the Sabbath. The Sabbath is the gathering place of witches. No, I don't literally ride a broomstick, but the Sabbath isn't really a physical place. The way that a lot of witches were said to fly to the Sabbath was by rubbing a flying ointment on themselves. And this flying ointment contained herbs that we now know to be hallucinogenic in nature. So things like belladonna, mugwort. Flying on a broomstick is the early modern equivalent of just tripping out. Regular skin is fine, but you shouldn't ingest it or, or put it on your naughty bits. Little safety advice for all those little witches out there watching this. Yes, I love this movie. Hail to the guardians of the watchtowers of the east. Powers of air and invention. Hear me. Us. Hear us. Hail to the guardians of the watchtowers of the south. The ritual that they do at the beach is actually a, of a very common ritual that you do in witchcraft called calling the corners or um, drawing a circle. So in a lot of witchcraft, sort of create a circle of protection around yourself before you engage in magic and to sort of create what's called a cone of power wherein your magic becomes stronger, especially if you're doing it with a group of people, which they were doing. Well, you have to first call the four corners of the cardinal direction, so north, south, east, and west. Every witch practices their craft a little bit differently. No two witches are gonna have the same way that they practice their craft. You could use that as a, as a template for a ritual. What are you cooking? Something smells handsome. <laughs> Sabrina, you're gonna love it. We're making you a dream date. You know, it's not an uncommon thing for witches to cook up a date for someone to use magic as a form of attraction. Inevitably, when you tell someone that you're a witch, the first thing that somebody asks you is if you can do a love spell for them. There's some controversy actually in the witchcraft community over love spells and over the ethics of love spells. Some people think that they're coercive and then therefore shouldn't be used. But some people also think that it's just the equivalent of maybe putting on a little bit of makeup up and wearing some nice perfume. But it's not so much about making someone fall in love with you, but it's more just about 
you know, opening up the doors and allowing something like that to come into your life, perhaps. I have done a love spell, yeah. I've done kind of attraction spells for myself. I'm going out on a date and I really want it to go well. I might light a candle, I might say a spell, I might do something of that sort. Personally, if I want someone to fall in love with me, I want it to be because of me and not be necessarily wondering if it's because of a spell. The soundtrack for this show is so good. Oh my god, I want all their outfits. This is just a Vogue photo shoot. Oh, Jessica Lang. I mean, is there anyone cooler? The idea that modern witches would burn one another alive if one transgressed sort of the rules of a community or a coven isn't accurate. That's murder. And I don't know anybody who's really down for that. Having a ritual sacrifice of someone isn't something that I know about anybody doing, but may hey, maybe I'm getting invited to the wrong party, right? I have cursed people. It is not something I do often because the couple of times I've done it, I've really f***ed up some lives. <laughs> There's a lot of ways to go about laying a curse on someone or laying a hex on someone. What a binding spell is, is kind of just keeping someone exactly where they are, stopping someone in their tracks so that they can't bring harm to you anymore. A really common way to do this is to take a photo of someone and wrap them up in like black tape and then put them in the back of your freezer because you're freezing them, right? Where they stand. Ooh, I'm so excited for this show. I love the comics. Are you willing to forsake the path of light and follow the path of night? It's very tough to run. Ooh, I'm so excited. Ooh. I can't do this. That's like everything I want in a TV show. I read the comics, so I know a little bit of what nefarious things that she gets up to, poor girl. In this one, Sabrina's having her friggin' birthday with the devil, you know? He's invited to the party, right? In Wicca, which is a religion that uses witchcraft as a part of it, there really isn't a figure called the devil. Most Wiccans don't believe in the devil. They worship a god and a goddess, and often the god is depicted as sort of a horned god, so maybe looking kind of devilish, but a lot of witches do worship the devil or do use the devil in their craft when they're talking about the devil. It's sort of the figure at the crossroads who's an initiatory figure into the world of witchcraft. If they decide to pull on any real dark lore. With pleasure. Which it kind of seems like they're doing here. If we can really do things with our minds, that's scary. So I like now that depictions of witchcraft are actually embracing more of the kind of darkness that was associated with witchcraft for a long time. The witch is an archetype and a symbol that's been with us for a millennia. But maybe don't believe everything you see in the movies. When it comes to magic, and especially witchcraft, truth truly is stranger than fiction.